Well, that was a that was a tough one. I mean, Central Connecticut. I feel like it's a broken record of saying we've been playing scrappy teams, but I mean, they just hung around. Um, they wouldn't go away, um, and I think you know the play of our bench really sparked us a lot. Um, I can't say enough about you know we got into that foul trouble early with our posts, um, and we knew we needed to stop you know uh, Baruby inside and, and defend the three point line. And I thought Tanaya Hanner and Abby Robinson coming off the bench just did a tremendous job defensively. Um, and I thought our pressure was really, you know, affecting them in the first half. And then the second half, I think we really struggled to defend. Um, we were kind of disjointed with the rotations and our pressure back to, um, you know, our half court set. And they just started attacking us. We were really spread out trying to protect the three point line. Then they were just going to the basket on us. So um, we really weren't containing them. And when you're not knocking down shots and then then you get to the free throw line and you're not knocking down the free throws, it's momentum changers. So I think, you know, I'm just really proud of the way the team handled those ebbs and flows of the, uh, of the game and, and credit Central Connecticut putting the pressure on and turning us over um, and creating some havoc there in, in the fourth quarter. But um, really proud of the way our team finished the, finished the game and, and, and some big shots that we hit down the stretch. I wanted to ask, um, Going into halftime, you had a very big lead. Can you walk us through your halftime speech this time, or what do you tell to your team uh, to stay ahead at halftime? Well, I first walked in and told them to take a deep breath and that we were okay. Because although we had pushed it out to, I think, maybe 15 or 16, I think it was 16, but then we fouled, and then it was 15. Um, you know, it, it never kind of felt like we were in control of the tempo um, for some reason. So I just told them to take a deep breath that we're fine. We practiced all of us, practiced our free throw um, rhythm all together and took a deep breath and, and we just talked about, you know, continuing to defend them the way that we needed to defend 33, that we were doing a good job, uh, you know, keeping her, you know, um, limited um, and doing a good job of pushing the ball and controlling the tempo. We just weren't capitalizing all the stops. We were stopping them. We weren't turning those into points. Um, so really trying to, to have everybody take a deep breath and execute side to side um, and, and to, to take our time. Um, are you concerned about, it seemed like they were getting into, into the, they were driving the lanes, which you clearly showed in your frustration on those plays. Um, are you concerned about that going, going forward? Or maybe it was just, you know, their game and a bad night um, as far as that, that one spot? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, that they did a good job of adjusting to, to what we were doing. We were really pressed out on the three-point line. You know, they averaged 25 threes a game, and they only attempted six, 16 today, and that's how many three-point shots they made in their last game. They made 16 threes, so we knew we needed to, to protect the three-point line. So when you're pressed out like that, and you're really trying to take away those, those outside shots, you know, that really stretches your defense. And I thought they did a nice job of capitalizing on that. And I think the face of that game, we were able to make the adjustment as well of d doing both, containing them, keeping them, keeping, contesting their three-point shot and containing them out of the lane. And what was happening is, is we were just getting caught not in help side defense. So if we did get beat off the dribble, we didn't have that second line of defense. So we'll make sure that we're practicing that um, when we get back from the break. Um, speaking of break, um, you guys are, are going to go in conference play. But before you go on a conference play, um, I just wanted to hear your opinion as far as the, the first half of the season of everything that you went through as far as like dealing with the, the Power 5 schools, fighting down, fighting with scrappy teams. Um, you know, some were tough losses, but some were great wins. You seem to win every which way, whether it was scrappy or putting a team out of commission early. Um, if you can just give your analysis of the first half of the season. Yeah, I mean, I think, <clears throat> You know, this certainly prepared us for, for conference play. I mean, playing some of the BCS teams and knowing that we can compete at a very high level um, on an opponent's home court, um, I think gives us a lot of confidence for the higher level teams in our league, uh, for the upper upper echelon of our league. And then I think in terms of just the scrappy teams that we've played, everybody's kind of given us a different look and challenged us to, to learn and grow in a different way. Um, you know, whether it would be, you know, defending a really tough inside pl player, you know, with Bryant and, um, you know, certainly tonight with Central Connecticut, 
or Canisius with mostly guard play that they can really shoot the ball, but they're changing their defenses. I mean, we've seen every defense known to me, and we've seen Sienna played us, you know, in a 2-2-1 two, two, half court. We've seen 2-3 two, three, and 3-2 three, and all kinds of different pressures, and I think that because we've been able to do that and handle that and see that, um, we really have been able to see that it pinpoint, um, you know, the areas of improvement. And then also, you know, what's what, what works for us. And we're still figuring out our rotations because this team doesn't have a star. You know, every given night, it's, it's somebody else's turn. And when we can really understand that and embrace that and celebrate each other, which we are, but at the same time not get frustrated if one of us has a, a tough night, um, you know, because everybody wants to play well. Everybody, you know, wants to do a good job. But again, it's about the team effort um, and winning. And right now, that's that's the strength of this team is is the fact that we don't have a star, and we kind of have to own that. And I think the players are really unselfish. And if we can continue to improve, make those little adjustments, I think we can have a lot of success. Um, so, so you know, your, your first game going in is going to be against Harvard. They're they're winless, so you know it's like every every sport. You don't want to be the first team to lose to them, <laughs> so. It's, uh, are you, I'm pretty sure you're not concerned about that, but what are you telling your team about that? Is yeah, it? I mean, <clears throat> we've played a lot of teams that have, you know, their records aren't indicative of what type of team they are. And a lot has to do with, you know, certainly in the non-conference, in the way people schedule their non-conference. I mean, Central Connecticut's played Rutgers, they've played Syracuse. So a two and seven record isn't really indicative of who they are like us when we've played BC and Vanderbilt. You can't go on someone's schedule, you know? So I think that experience of us like, hey, you gotta take this their record away and you gotta focus on the fact that this is a talented team. And Hartford is is dying for a win, you know, and they've had a lot of transition in their program and you know, um, you know, they, they want to win the game. So we need to prepare our team the best that we can and, and make sure that they understand that on any given night, it doesn't matter what your record is, it doesn't matter who you are. If you, you know, if, if you don't work hard and you're not ready to compete to play, you know, you can lose. So we need to make sure that we do whatever we can to prepare our team in the best way to have the best scout um, and the best preparation we can to win the game. Um, last question. Um, <clears throat> You guys are in second place, and you you kind of hit the nail right ahead. You always said it from from even when you were injured a lot, you had a lot of injuries, and you still fought through. And you know we could go talk about how you showed um, resilience against everything, resilience against everything. Um, and you always said we're a top four team, and you're showing that you showed that last season you've been through COVID. You're showing that now as being a number two team. Um, is it is it a mindset just next game? Because I mean it's. Even though you, you want to be in the top four, you want to be the top team, we all know the elephant in the room is Stony Brook is a top team. So, I mean, do you, do you, even when you're winning, you're undefeated at home and you're doing everything, are you kind of looking at them also? Or is it just, I'm, we're keeping tunnel vision and we'll figure it out at the end of the season? I think, I think it's tunnel vision, you know? Like, I think right now, too, it's hard to think about the record because we haven't played anybody in the league and everybody's schedules is so crazy. Like, some people in our league have played two or three Division three or NAIA schools, so they might have a better record, and some people have played multiple BCS teams, you know? Like, uh, Stony Brook's played BCS teams, Power Five schools, and one, you know? So, um, I think right now, just focusing on what's in front of us and, breaking down the film from this game, how can we get better from this game, and how can we prepare for our next game? Uh, and going one game at a time, because it's easy, like I can't tell you how many times I beat myself up looking back up like Merrimack after the 29 point win against Hofstra, then we turn around and we lose to Merrimack. But we, we don't beat Central Connecticut, we don't beat Bryant if we don't have that game versus Merrimack. You know, you, you don't do it because they're so scrappy. We learned a lot in that Merrimack game about what we need to do to be able to compete against teams that bring that type of, you know, work ethic and toughness and physicality. Uh, and then Cornell, you think about, okay, one shot the other way at the buzzer, and, you know, we, we have that. So it's easy to go back, and as a coach, you can sit there and then spend some time, and you're like, you're, like a, you're punching yourself, you're like a punching bag. But at the end of the day, you just have to do what's in front of you, try to prepare your team, 
learn from the last game, learn from your practices, and focus on what's in front of you one game at a time. One last question. Sure. You're undefeated at home, and you're closing the year out on a win. What is one key takeaway that you're bringing into the new year for your team? I think one key takeaway for our team is that um, teamwork and the intangibles of our team um, are what make us special. And the intangibles being um, our unselfishness, our ability to celebrate each other, and our ability to go out there and, and gut out wins together, um, counting on our defense. But at the end of the day, it's the power of our team because we don't have the star. And I said, them today, said it today to them in the locker room, like there's multiple players on our team that could go for 20 points in a, in a night. Um, and that's just not gonna happen a lot because we have such balance and we're, we really have, have depth. And it's about how much we each contribute and the bench is ready to play and the starters are ready to, to, to celebrate people that are coming in and, and playing and just how we play together is the number one takeaway of how we need to perform and be successful in conference play. Thank you.